to mark out the frames for our folding camp stool okay it's really important to before you do start have your plans with you okay know what it is that you're doing okay two frames are very similar however uh, frame B which will fit inside frame A um, so the measurements are going to be a little bit smaller but what I want you to do first Make sure you have a, a, a sharp pencil, okay? And I have these two tiles here. So frame A, so I have my two legs, the top rail, and then my bottom rail there, okay? This frame is frame A, so right, frame A on each piece. Okay, just like that. Okay, from here, Put your name on everything so on the other side. And make sure that it is nice and clear, clearly written. Okay, so I've done that for frame A. I'm going to do the same for frame B. Write um, frame B on everything and our name there. Okay, firstly, with my legs, so these are my legs, okay. The width of our timber is 42 mil width. The thickness is 19, that's the stock size. Okay, these have been docked down to a length of 400 mil. So we're gonna start by marking out our legs. Okay, to do so, grab your steel rule. Okay, like I said before, make sure you have a sharp pencil with you and an eraser in case you make a mistake. Also have here my tri -strip. We're going to measure 60 mil from the bottom. Okay, so just sit your steel rule like so. Okay, and mark 60 mil. Okay, and do the exact same here. So I've got 60 mil there, and mark that. All right, so that's 60 mil from the end. Grab your tri-square, okay, and what we're going to do here, make sure you use the tri-square correctly, okay? I see students who, so you have the blade, and the stock. The edge of your material must be running up alongside, that's the stock must be running up alongside the edge of your material. Okay, line that up and then pencil in that 60 mil. And let's do the same on this side. Okay, we are going to now extend that line, okay, all the way around. But we always work off this line here, okay, just to make sure we're being accurate. Again, with the tri-square, okay, and mark that, and mark that. Okay, they all match up, and I'll do the opposite side here. Okay, repeat the process on my other leg for frame A. So that should look like that. Well, uh, this is a length of 260. What I'm going to do is just place that like so. So I might even just turn this around that way. Get your square. Now slide the square up until this edge lines up with my 60 mil line. Okay, might be difficult to see that there. Okay, that's my 60 mil line there. Okay, so line that up. Take this one away and now pencil that in. So we have two lines now, okay? And the distance between those two lines is the width of my rail, which is 42 mil. Let's 
now transfer that all the way around. Okay, so it looks like so. Okay, and I will repeat the process again on the other leg. So I have my rail that goes down the bottom, tri square, slide that up, and until I can just see my pencil mark, very difficult for you guys to see there. And pencil that in. Okay. And transfer this around. That is the first part of the mortise marked out on my frame A legs. Next thing we're going to do here on our leg is to measure the width of our mortise that will go on the bottom of our leg here. Okay, so firstly what you're going to do is just place that nicely in your vise. You will need a marking gauge, okay, setting the marking gauge to, if we do a little bit of maths, the width is 42, we have to take, our, our mortise will be a width of 6 mil, and that's the size of the chisel, so that works out perfectly for us. So if we take away 6 mil from 42, that gives us 36, and if we divide 36 by 2, that gives us 18. So what we are going to do here is set our marking gauge, so the distance, so setting the distance between the stock, that's that surface there, and the pin, that has to be 18 mil. To do that, get your steel rule, okay, just place it underneath the pin. We will untighten that screw and slide it to the 18. You'll just have it like that. Make sure this is nice and accurate. Now, before you go and scribe lines, check. To check, to check that it's set at the right distance, firstly, I'm just gonna run the stock up alongside the edge and put a dot on my line here, my bottom line. Turn my marking gauge around and place a dot from the other side. Now, ideally, theoretically, the distance between those two dots that I've just put there should be six mil. And I can check that using my six mil chisel. Okay. So if I place that there, that matches. So I know that I can now scribe my lines here. If it doesn't match, you've either done your maths incorrectly or you haven't set your marking gauge up correctly. Because I've set my marking gauge up correctly, I'm going, to I'm going ahead to scribe my lines. Before I do scribe my lines, however, I'm going to put a dot right on the finish point. This is so that I don't, so when I scribe my line, it will stop on that point and I won't keep scribing my line on, my, on the part of the leg that you will see. And I'll do the exact same on the opposite side. Here we go. So now when we scribe our line, you must have two hands on the marking gauge. So my thumb, my finger, thumb and finger here. Okay, and drag that pin, and you just heard it drop into that line there, that dot. And we'll do the same on the opposite side here. So the stock is hard up alongside the edge, just firmly pushing that in, and it stops right on my line here. You should see two grooves in there. I will actually pencil these in so I can see them a lot easier. That distance is 18 mil, and the distance between these two is six mil. From here, just put a couple of hatch marks. That tells me that that's the waste. I then repeat the same process on the other side. That groove is really good because it also, once we start to cut out our mortise, 
The chisel can sit in there nicely so I can locate where I need to cut things out. Do the same for both of your legs. Next step is to mark out the tenon on the top of our leg. Okay, so to do that, just make sure you have a piece of one of your other rails. It needs to have that 19 mil thickness there. I'll start with this leg. I'm going to also use a tri-square and a steel rule. Place your piece like that and then have a steel rule sitting up alongside that. Slide that, and you can see here with my right hand, I'm just pushing with that index finger, pushing the opposite way until I have a flush surface between the leg that I'm marking out on and my steel rule. Okay, so that's the thickness that I have there. Get your pencil and scribe that in. Now that should actually be okay, 21 mil, 20 to 21 mil. We've added the thickness of the steel rule to this. And it's really important for later on down the track. Grab your square, carefully working off the same line. Don't go following that line, work off the original line. You should have a line that's 20 mil roughly from the end of the top of your leg. With our bridle joint, we want to set our marking gauge to 14 mil. The width of our timber is 42, so to have three equal segments for our bridle joint will be 14 mil. Grab your tri-square and the same process as we did before, set that to 14 mil. Again, you're going to check with the dot technique. So run the stock up alongside the edge of your material or your leg on both sides. Okay, now grab a, the size of the chisel we have here is a 13 mil. That should fit with about one mil clearance. Perfect. Grab your marking gauge again and scribe down grain this way as well repeat the process on the end grain when you are scribing end grain just be mindful okay to press down a little bit harder because that pin does want to jump around a fair bit because of the just the, the pattern of that grain Again on this side, and on my opposite side I'll do the same. I do want to put a dot at the finish point. And we will pencil this in. Finally, we will be cutting out the centre, so I just put an X in there. That way I know when I cut this out. Your bridle joint for the leg should look like that. Okay, 14mm, 14mm, 14mm. 